welcome to a rainy day here at our farmhouse and part two of our Second Timothy Bible study. As I am making breakfast for the day, which is a blueberry puff pancake or Dutch baby, whatever you like to call them, I have this recipe linked below. Instead of doing a whipped cream or syrup topping, I am doing just powdered sugar and lemon juice, like a lemon poppy seed muffin icing on top. It is so delicious. I'm reminded that what we put into our bodies, what we feed our bodies with, that's what our body has to go off of for energy, for nutrition, for growth. And the same can really be said spiritually. What are we feeding our bodies throughout the day in all of the small moments of what we listen to, what we watch, what we take in? How are we spiritually feeding our bodies? As we dive into 2 Timothy chapters 3 and 4, if you missed the video on chapters 1 and 2, I will have that linked, as well as I have a free Bible study that you can download to follow along with so that you can really dive into scripture and apply it to your life and see how God is talking to you personally. We will see that Paul and the Holy Spirit are really talking about what is happening with us internally and change that needs to happen so that we are not godless, that we can be true followers of Jesus. And not just in our words, not just saying we believe, but having our beliefs actually change who we are, how we act, what we think, what we say. And I pray that this study on 2 Timothy, these beautiful scriptures that I will be reading today as you follow along with a day in my life, that they would be encouraging to you, life-giving to you, and convicting. So let's get started. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1-5 through five say, You must understand this, that in the last days distressing times will come, for people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, inhumane, implacable, slanderers, profligates, brutes, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to the outward form of godliness but denying its powers, avoid them. Paul is sharing a list of sins a list of sins that men are going to be struggling with. When it talks about a weak woman in verse 6, it also says that she is burdened with sins and swayed by various impulses. These sins could fall under that list in verses 2 through 5. Let each of us reflect on every single one of those sins, every single one of them, because although this says it's going to happen in the last days, these sins are happening right now. Look at that list. What sins are you struggling with right now? The devil is very active and very much at work here on the earth. He is whispering lies to us, feeding us past memories, hurts, he is trying to break our relationship with others. He's trying to break our relationship with God. And his goal is to bring us to these sins mentioned, these sins listed. But our focus needs to be redirected. I know mine does personally. Starting in verse 10, Paul is telling us how as Christians we are to conduct ourselves. We are to observe his teaching, his conduct and aim at his life, at his faithfulness, at his patience, his love, his steadfastness, and his persecutions and sufferings. And of course, Paul was just filled with the Holy Spirit, right? But we are filled with the Holy Spirit too. So we can use Paul's life as an example, as a way to live. But we also have to remember, which is actually coming up in a few verses, that scripture is spirit-inspired. It is written by God through the author, which means that the Holy Spirit 
God, he is talking about himself as well, at his life, at the life of Jesus, at Jesus' faith, his patience, his love, his steadfastness, his persecutions, and of course, Jesus' sufferings. Paul is telling us in verses 11 and 12, I endured, yet from them all the Lord rescued me. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. He also directs us in verse 14 and says, But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed. Paul is telling us in verses 15 through 17, You have been acquainted with the sacred scriptures, which are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. We have God's love letter to us. We have it in our hands. Chapter 4 tells us what to do with it. He says, I charge you, preach the word. Be urgent in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, and exhort. Be unfailing in patience and in teaching. Chapter 4 verse 5 says, As for you, always be steady. Endure suffering. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. These are personal instructions to us from God. I want to close with chapter 4, verses 17 and 18. It says, But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength to proclaim the word fully, that all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen.